So the heading is volume of a sphere. And on the board, and I'd love for you in your book, I've drawn a circle. This is a circle right now, but watch this. I'm about to make it a sphere. Oh, you did this last time. Yeah. Oh, bam, it's a sphere. Okay, Peter Mendes. Now, if you've got a sphere as attractive as mine, um, the volume of a sphere has a really unusual formula to it. But before I show you, we need to add a little bit onto our diagram here. Okay. On a sphere, it's not like a prism in that if I cut it at any different point, I'm not going to get the same shape every time. I'm going to get different shapes. However, whichever way you cut it, if you cut across, you're going to get a circle. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, if you can draw in for me, right in the middle, the center of the sphere. <coughs> If we went all the way around this sphere, right in the middle, okay, so if this was the Earth, I guess what we'd be looking at is the... Hemisphere. Well, hold on, just this line I mean. Equator. So I've got, yeah, I've got hemisphere here, hemisphere here. <laughs> this line would be the equator. <laughs> so this equator, right? Remember I said to you, if you cut the circle in this direction, you'll get a whole bunch of different circles. If you cut higher or lower though, do you notice, you don't have to draw this part because your diagram will get very busy. But if you drew one on the top, do you notice the circle will be smaller? You notice that? Like if you're right in the middle, that's the biggest circle you can possibly get. So we call this, because it's the biggest one, we give it a special name. We call it a great circle. And the equator is a great circle on the Earth. Okay. Uh, whereas, for instance, if you go look at the top, if this were the Earth, that might be something like the Arctic Circle. It's still a circle, but it's definitely not the biggest one. So, in order to measure this thing, we need the Great Circle, and we need its radius. Just like a circle, um, the sphere only has one dimension that really matters. So, if I say this is the radius, it's not just any radius, it's the radius of the Great Circle. Then, the volume formula looks like this. Okay, now, I'd just like to go on record to say, at this point in time, as a year 10 student, I remember, this is one of the weirdest formulas to remember. It's quite easy to get it wrong. It's sort of like, why is that four thirds? What is up with that? What is it doing there? Um, I just want to point out that just like with the volume of a cone and prism of pyramids, uh, in future, uh, and if you're new to your maths, which I think is pretty much everyone in this room, in future you will learn why this four <laughs> thirds is what it is, and why it seems to have a mysterious connection. Do you remember the surface area of a sphere? We looked at it very briefly. I showed you a red point. Do you remember what it was? It's got like four circles in it. Yeah, very good. Four circles, and we know every circle is pi r squared. Okay? Now I wonder, if you squint, do you notice these guys have to be related in some way, and they are, in a really, really surprising way. But there's a lot of other mathematics you have to develop before that makes sense. For now, this is the formula that I'd like you to have in your mind. Put a big colourful box around it, and let's just simply have an idea of how to use it. Here I've got three simple setups. I've drawn no pictures because every sphere looks like every other sphere. Okay? Every single one is similar to all the rest. So that one over there, that's just going to be our sphere for this question. If I have a piece of information, like say the radius, I can use that to work out the volume. It's really simple, straight substitution. In this case, the volume will be 4 thirds pi times 5 cubed. That's it. Uh, 5 cubed is 125. <coughs> 4 times 125, I think, is 500. Now, I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to point something out. Would you put your pens down for a moment? Occasionally, not very often, but occasionally, rather than like in the first, in the review questions, I asked you to approximate. I said, hey, can you give this to me one decimal place, two decimal place, etc." Occasionally, you'll be asked to provide an answer and they want you to leave it precise. They don't want you to approximate. They want it exact, not like 10 decimal places or 20 perfectly. So what I've done here, 500 pi on 3, that's it. That is the exact volume. If they then want you to approximate, you're of course going to put this into your calculator. Uh, what are you going to get when you put it in? Has someone already calculated it by any chance? Yeah, okay. 
Nine. Wait, hold on. Five twenty-three point what? Five. Five was it? Five yeah. nine. Yeah. Five. Dot dot dot. Okay. So for all intents and purposes, let's just go one decimal place. I don't know if you've seen before, but the approximately equal sign. There's two of them. This is one of them. It's the one I like. It's two wavy lines. So I'm going to do one decimal place. Does anyone know what the other approximately equal sign is? Has anyone seen it? It looks like a regular equal sign, except it has two dots. And once you see it, maybe you can tell why I don't like this one and I prefer this one. When you do this one, if you like just do really little ones, it just looks like a normal equal sign, right? It's very easy to mistake. Like when you press a dot, it's quite easy to just look like that. So that's why I prefer this one. Okay, let's have a look at... Oh yeah, question. Would it be wrong if you like simplified it? You mean went to this? Yeah. And they didn't ask for it. If they didn't ask for it, at this point it wouldn't really matter. But pay attention to whether they say give me the exact, that's exact, or give it to me one decimal place, two decimal places, whatever. That's what that is. Okay? Right. If they said like solve the area or like the volume of this, then would you could you put it anyway or? If they didn't specify, really, I mean, to be honest, have a look at the way I set out this answer. Do you notice the first thing I did was, here's the exact one, and then I went to my calculator, and I did the approximate one. If they didn't ask for a particular way, look, I've got both. I've clearly demonstrated the skill to be able to do both. So, how are you going to take marks off me, right? So, therefore, I, I think this is the best way to go, but just read the question, and the question should tell you. Alright, uh, have a look at this one. Now, this doesn't take too much thinking, but it is phrase slightly differently. If you've been given the diameter, can I put that in here? No. I can't because the diameter is exactly well, twice the radius. So the first thing I've got to do is work out what the radius is, so halve it. And now I can use the formula because the formula is all about the radius. So I'm not even going to actually work it out, but I'll show you the line that I would put. 4 thirds pi times 50 squared, cubed, sorry. And off you go. Okay. By the way, just a quick note. Uh, the powers. Remember this one's surface area and there's a 2. This one is volume and there's a 3. Why is that? Think, think, think. They are different. Who said that? Who did the, can you say it again louder, Kate, please? Volume and 3 dimensions. Fantastic. This is a 3 dimensional space. This surface area it's a two-dimensional space, so that's why it's a two, that's why it's a three, and even though I just got that wrong, I fixed myself up because I knew it was volume, it was 3D. You can work out what that is. Last question. If you get given the volume instead, we can reverse this process and find out the radius or the diameter if we so choose. So why don't we just keep it simple for now. If I told you the volume, this is like the cylinder question I gave you before, how would I go about finding the radius? What would I write? Yeah, I mean. So that formula and then equals Okay, very good. So this is the volume which has been given to me. So I put this over on the left hand side because I do want the R eventually to be on the left hand side. So I might as well put it on the left hand side to begin with. Okay? Then I need to divide both sides. So let's see. If I divide both sides, what do I want to divide by? Hi. I will divide by pi. What else do I need to divide by? Four thirds as well. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do the whole thing at once, and I'm gonna let the calculator take care of it. So I'm gonna go 541 divided by four thirds pi. I know that's a little bit messy, having a fraction inside a fraction, but to be honest, the calculator will just eat that for breakfast. He doesn't care so long as you input it correctly. Now, uh, let's actually work that out. Can you tell me? Uh, what's the readout on your calculator when you put 541 and you do the fraction <coughs> button and put 4 thirds pi on the bottom? Can you do it? Yeah. 129.154236. Thumbs up? I got the same? So if this 129 point whatever, if that number is what I've got off the right hand side, don't forget that's not the radius. What is that? The pi. Well, it's the radius cubed. Ah, look again at the left hand side, right? This is why it's so important you write both sides of the equation. This is not the radius, this is the radius cubed. So on your calculator, what have you got to do to undo that? Ah, be super careful. 
if you have a look uh, on my calculator, above the square root button, you can see in yellow, there's the cube root button, okay? So what you're gonna have to do with that number still there is go shift, square root. You'll know it's different because the calculator display on mine looks like this. Right? So that three is how you know you're taking the cube root, not the square root. Once you've done that, can I get a number? 5.05478. 5.0 what? 0.54 dot dot dot. Cool, that's right. And you guys can approximate it for the last thing. And that's it. Uh, what are the units, by the way? Now this is a length, so therefore it's one dimensional, so it's just centimeters. And I'm done.